welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Most. Today's part three of my Students and Grades series. If you haven't watched parts one and two yet, you know what to do. Go watch those first and then come on back. You'll find links down below. All right, so we got our student form all set so we can look at students. We've got our assignment form set so we can look at assignments. But I want to look at all of this stuff together so it kind of looks like a spreadsheet. Right, that's our goal, right? We want to see it like this. Okay. So to do that, we're going to use a cross-tab query. Now, this is one of those things I told you to watch first as one of the prerequisites before video one was how to make a cross-tab query. So let's go ahead and create a cross-tab query. Let's make the cross-tab query based on the table where our data is located, which is the student X assignment E junction table. So this is one of the only query wizards I ever use because you don't want to set this up by hand. It really is a pain setting it up by hand. So I will use the cross tab query wizard from time to time. Hit OK. Now, which query contains the fields you want for the cross tab query results? Well, we're going to get it from our junction table. Next, which fields have the row headings? That's this stuff, the row headings. That's going to be our student. And we'll bring it over. And then next. And now who's got the column headings? The column is the assignment. And then next. Now, what's the intersection, the data in here? That's going to be the grade. Now, you got to pick a function. I, I always just pick some, but it's only going to be a single bit of data because we literally have that index in place, that composite key to prevent there being multiple intersections here, right? You can't have a student assignment twice. So this will never happen. No matter which one of these you pick, it should always be the same. I just stick with some because, okay. Um, do you want the row sums? No, I usually turn that off. I just want to see the raw data. That's just me. Um, but if you want to see the row sums and stuff, that's fine too. All right, next. Here's what it's going to save it as. I'm going to change the name just slightly to that to keep with my naming conventions. I like to aim. I like to end all of my queries in Q, and I don't like using underscores. You can use underscores. I usually reserve underscores for special things, but that's up to you. All right, view the query. Finish. Mm, okay. All right. Not too bad, but I'm seeing all the IDs here when I really want to see the values there, right? The student's name and the assignment's name. Okay. All right. So we'll keep this. Keep Hang on to that. In order to bring that stuff together where you can actually see the names as well, we're going to need to make another query. We're going to have to take this table and then join in these two tables that have the data in them so we can bring the names in as well. Okay, so let's create query design this time. I'm going to bring in the junction table, the student table, and the assignment table, just like that. Okay, and notice how they're joined. You shouldn't have to worry about your join types here because if it's got a record in this table, it should have a matching record in the other tables. I can't see any reason why that it wouldn't. So I'm going to bring in the star from here, and then I'm also going to bring in student name, and assignment name. And then we're going to save this as my student X assignment Q. Okay, and that's just going to basically look like that. It's got all the same information that the table has, but we've added the student name and the assignment name so we can see them in the cross tab query. Okay, all right, save it, close it. Let's make another cross tab query. So create query wizard. Cross tab query wizard. Hit OK. All right. Who's got the data this time? This time we're going to go to queries and pick that guy. Not the original cross tab query. Pick this one. That's the one we just made. All right. Next. Who's got the row headings? This time I'm going to put student name in there. If you want to also bring in the ID, you can. But usually for something like this, I don't care to see that. Next. Column headings is the assignment name. Next, the data is still grade. I pick sum and turn that off. Next. And again, we're going to go like this and we'll call this uh, with name Q like that. And then we'll hit finish. And there it is. Hey, it looks a lot better. There's your students and your quizzes across the top. Obviously, if there are students that are missing data, they're not going to show up in here. 
Now, if you don't want to see this as a query, I like to make sure that my end users work with just forms. You can build a form out of this. However, your form is going to be stuck with these as field names. Okay, if you build a form out, that's one of the limitations across inquiries. And this is not editable. Okay. Again, one of the limitations of cross tab queries is that they're read only. Can you make it so that this is editable? Mm, kinda. Not the way it is now, but it is possible. And I will show how to do that in the extended cut. Yes, it does involve a significant significant. I can't talk today. A significant amount of programming. There's going to be a lot of VBA involved, some temporary tables, some additional SQL but you can make it work. Here it is, in fact, right? There it is. You can come in here. You can click on here, change these, see? Use the arrow keys up and down, put a grade in, see? You can change what's up here if you want to, drop this down, put test one in there again. I don't care. <laughs> but seriously, though, this way, if you come in here and let's, um, let's add another assignment, let's add uh, quiz three. All right, save that. Now, if we come back into the editor, you'll see quiz three over here. And now you just come in here and put in the, the grades, 65, 72, right? And so on. So this is definitely possible. There's a ton of code behind this though. So I will cover it and go over all the code in the extended cut for the members. Silver members and up get access to all the extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases that I build in the extended cuts. And all members get some kind of free lessons every month and all kinds of cool stuff. So check it out. You'll find a link down below for more information on becoming a member. All right. But wait now, we're not done with today's video. I just inserted that as like a little teaser, but I'm going to show you one more thing. Remember how I told you there's going to be no VBA programming? Well, I lied. I'm going to do just a little tiny bit of programming to show you something cool. These are the kind of things I normally cover in my developer classes. All right. So let's say you got the student form up here. All right. Here's Scotty, right? Let's say, okay, I want to see, um, here's test one. How did everybody else do on test one? How about if I double click on test one? And look at that. It opens up the assignment form with everybody's test one scores. Oh, and that neat. Oh, okay. How did Sulu do? Let's double click on Sulu. Brings it over here back to Sulu. See, we can double click on these guys to open up either that student form or that assignment form. How do we do that? Well, first of all, I, I got to switch this from expert to developer now. So now we're, now we're doing developer stuff. What does that mean? That means we're going to use a teeny tiny bit of VBA code. Literally one line of code will do it, but you got to know the right spot to put it in. But if you've never done any VBA programming before and you want to see how easy it is, go watch this video first, about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you know to get started. Then you come on back to this spot and we'll continue on right here. All right, so let's open up that subform. Okay, this guy and this guy, we're going to put a double click event in each of those. First thing I like to do is give them some color. So I'm going to click and then shift click on that one. And let's go to format and make them a light blue. This is something that I do in my databases that just visually tells the user, hey, if it's that light color blue, I can double click on it and something's going to happen. Okay, it's just a training thing. Okay, so let's start with this guy. All right, double click to bring up the properties, go to events and find on double click right there, this guy. Okay, hit the dot, dot, dot button, the builder button. Now I have my database program to always open up this code builder. If you get a little window that pops up that says, uh, what builder would you like? Just pick the code builder and this thing will pop up. All right, this is the visual basic editor and we are in the student combo double click event, which means when you double click on student combo, something's gonna happen. What do we wanna happen? I want to open up the student form to whatever value is in the student combo. So it's going to be do command docmd dot open form. We're opening the student f comma 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 chameleon, right? The where condition is going to be where the student ID on that form equals ampersand student combo. All right. What this says is the student ID equals, and then it puts whatever values in the student combo box, three, six, two, whatever, right? So it's gonna be student, student ID equals two. That is the where condition, right? That goes to this guy. 
Okay, so you're going to open the student form where the student ID is 2 or whatever. All right, save it. Come back over here. Let's close this. Now, open up. let's open up the assignment form. Okay, double click on bones. Boom, and look at that. See that? Now they overlap each other, right? I'm going to move assignments over here. I'm going to put the students there. Save it. Control S. I'm going to move this guy here. Save it. Control S. Now it should remember its positions. All right, so if I close that and reopen Uhura, boom, there's Uhura stuff. Okay, looks good so far. Let's do the same thing for the assignment. All right, so come back into here, the subform, design view, assignment, on double click, dot, 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 and then we're right above the other one. It's very similar. It's going to be do command, open form, assignment, assignment F, comma, 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 where the assignment ID equals whatever is in the assignment combo. That's it. Let's see two lines of code. And look at this functionality you're getting for just two lines of code. All right? Open up the student form. Oh, well, let's take a look at quiz one. There's everybody for quiz one. There are not a lot of people took quiz one. Let's go to test one. Oh, there's everybody's test one scores. Oh, let's see what Jim and, or Bones have been doing. Double click. See? You can jump back and forth between them. Isn't that neat? That's pretty cool, right? And see how much of a time saver that is instead of having to find them in the list and open them up. You can just jump back and forth between these. This is the kind of stuff that I teach in my developer classes. It's super easy. This is, it's not hard. You learn a little bit of VBA and you can go a long way with it. So if you're curious, you want to learn more about developing with Access VBA, check it out. I got lots of developer lessons on my website. If you want to learn more about cross-tab queries, which is what we use today to create that spreadsheet-like view, I cover them in Access Expert 17 and Expert 18. We cover lots of with cross-tab queries as well. I'll put links to those down below. I also have this video available that teaches you how to sort your cross-tab queries based on the column headers. So you can check that out too. And of course, don't forget, check it out the extended cut where I show you how to make an editable cross-tab form. This is pretty cool. It took me took me most of a day to put this together. So it's it's some good stuff. All right, so that's going to do it, folks. That's the end of the students in grade series for now. That's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And members, I'll see you in the extended cut. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your Access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link.
Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90-minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.